Hi, I'm Justin McCullough with Capital One Spark Business, and we're at the Small Business Festival, and I've got Joshua with me. Joshua, why don't you tell me a little bit about who you are and your business? Um, cool. My name is Joshua Bingaman. Uh, I have a, a company here in Austin called Helm Boots, and uh, we're a footwear company. We've got a, a flagship here and uh, a couple dozen wholesale accounts uh, internationally, actually. And uh, yeah, we're, we're growing fast and uh, make shoes and, and source and, and produce everything here in the U.S. That's great. So how, how does that even come about? How do you go from wanting to do some boots and getting multiple distribution accounts in a store? <laughs> Good question. <laughs> I have no idea. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, I, long story short, um, have an aunt in Istanbul. I was visiting her one of the multiple times I was there, met a guy who had a shoe factory. I had actually had a shoe store in San Francisco. Mm -hmm. I've had a few businesses and uh, had always wanted to start my own line. And just the relationship with this guy led to, hey, let me give you some of my designs and styles. and. Next thing you know is order a hundred of each style. Yeah. So there are seven styles. Ship them to Austin, and the rest is is history. That's I brought it. it three years ago, almost four years ago, to the U.S. when okay. I was Istanbul. Just the travel and the customs and port fees and everything just right. got to where, man, I don't know if I can do this overseas. So I just started banging doors down in Maine and Arkansas, where there's the few remaining American shoe factories, and here we are. So you just knocked on doors? Literally. Yeah. yeah, I called, and a lot of them are really old school, multi-generational, so I actually faxed a couple of them. Right. Faxed and faxed and faxed until I got a response. That's amazing. Yeah. So I, I know some of the folks that are watching right now are thinking, you know, I've had an idea for some sort of fashion. And you made it sound like, hey, I just had an idea and I just sort of put it together. Yeah. So let's fill in the gaps there a little sure, bit, right? Sure. I think it's called insanity. <laughs> now, um, fill in the gaps as in from the thought to doing it. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, can anybody just decide they want to do a boot, uh, boot business? I mean, anybody can decide they want to. And I was talking about that a little on stage. Uh, not anybody can do it. Okay. Um, in point of like, I don't think just anybody should do it. If you have an idea, if you have the vision, you have the mission, you have the drive, taking that action mm -hmm. on it, um, not just a lot of people, I want to start a business. Hey, I want to start a boot business, a clothing mm -hmm. company. I've heard that a lot. And I don't say it uh, pretentiously, but it's like, yo, if you're going to start it, start it, stop talking to me about it. Mm -hmm. um, or do you really have it in you? And I, I, that's where I'll ask somebody where it's like, man, if you're not willing to uh, kind of run a race that never ends, mm -hmm. um, don't. Yeah. <laughs> For right. yourself. Yeah. Right. I try to try to save people the the heartache. I, if I see that somebody has it in them, if they've got the crazy in their eye mm -hmm. or, or the shining, you know, like the old Jack Nicholson, where right. he tells the kid, hey, you, you've got the shining. I have it. You have it. We can only see it in each right. other. I feel like that with business owners or with entrepreneurs where it's it's in you don't have a choice almost mm. you, you can't it's like breathing for you um, it's like a, a creator's manifesto right I have to create it won't yeah. it won't stop I have to build and if I don't there's no there's no purpose sure yeah, yeah. so obviously you've got some experience with this this is business number four yes sir right so tell us did did the boot business come to life? Did Helm Boots come to life because you had three other businesses? Or do you think you could have easily just done that as, as the first business? I think the process, that's, that's a great question. I've never thought of that. That's probably why I've started so business so many businesses is it hits me and it's a fire and okay. I, I go. Um, I think I ate a, enough crow through the ones prior to it and learned enough. Like that was my, my school of hard knocks or just doing it. I had yeah. never, a lot of people do a lot of prep and, and education and how to write a business plan and everything. Uh, I was just running so full speed that there were sh super big potholes and I mean there were some chasms that, that go down in it and, and down here on the bottom and climbing up is probably where I, I learned the most about surviving a business, mm -hmm. not just starting one. Because again, that's the thing. It's like, hey, I can start a business. I can probably convince somebody to invest or I have a rich uncle. It's when you're around in third base, can you, can you make it yeah. home? That's when the business flourishes or grows legs where um, it doesn't always for people. They'll, yeah. they'll get it started. And that's not getting it started. That's that. But, man, there's a lot more to it.
Do you think that, I, I know right now our audience is thinking, well, he's been successful with three other businesses, so of course he's got another fourth business. That's, mm -hmm. He's a serial entrepreneur, he's bankrolling, right? False. <laughs> so let's let's talk about the reality okay. of, of like, how do we pull the finances together? How do we build a business? Are, are you bootstrapping this or, or are you mega rich? Let's, let's, you know, let's figure that out. I'm not mega rich, the reality of it that I don't, I don't know if it's like this for all business owners, but I've, I've met quite a few who it is like this until they either hit it or they quit. Yeah. Um, but I'll be credit poor and cash wealthy or, or, or uh, cash poor and credit wealthy, or I'll just have these kind of flat line moments. Um, but it's always come at like the exact right times where it's like, I'm gonna belly up. I don't know if I can do this anymore. And then something will happen, whether it be a crazy sales or some PR thing or somebody stepping up and saying, hey, we're interested in investing. Mm -hmm. Like when that starts coming to you, it's like, I'm supposed to keep doing this. Yeah. Like I can't quit, I can't stop. Um, but yeah, the the first few businesses, yeah, I, I would think just diving in, they they wet my chops enough to be able to say, I, I guess I can, I can do this. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's like jumping in the deep end to answer right. your question where it's like, I didn't know how to swim when I first jumped in, but I've been in it long enough that I'm swimming. Yeah. It was doggy paddling at first. That's right. Yeah. So no breakaway successes, no no free rides, huh? No it it was all rides. pushing hard. Yeah. And even when there were those those propulsions of success, keeping the cart behind the horse is mm -hmm. as difficult. Growth and cash flow is as difficult as um, crickets and silence. I mean, yeah. where it's like I've had a cafe where we struggle to get people in, and I've had a cafe with a line down the street where we can't keep up. Right, right. Those are both problems. Right, right. <laughs> so it's figuring out to handle how to handle uh, the ability to, to pivot and That's to right. change all the time for everything you need to and have to. Mm -hmm. So uh, obviously in our business, we help folks with credit and loans and things like that. Mm -hmm. Have you ever found yourself in a position like that on your businesses? Uh, dear God, yes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Understand Making that. payroll or oh just gosh, yeah. equipment purchases or whatnot? I mean, it's gone from lines of credit to credit cards, multiple yeah. credit cards to mortgaging a home, dual mortgaging a home, selling a home, selling cars, those kind of things where to someone else it might seem literally crazy. There's a... That there's shining no, showing through, right? Like right, crazy right, right. It's like, oh, you've gosh. got it, don't you? There's but no security yeah. in it. If somebody, I mean, I guess when somebody's like, hey, I'm making millions and millions and millions, but I know business owners like that, or, or we have yeah. investors like that mm -hmm. now who sit on our board and they are restless, mm -hmm. or they know that it could be gone tomorrow, but that's how you're able to do it. You, yeah. don't, you don't rest on your laurels or on the fact that, hey, I've got all this money now, um, I'm secure. Uh, I think the the ability to be able to do it and to keep starting and keep going is the fact that, hey, what do you save from your house if it's burning? It's like nothing. Let it burn. Right. Or because if you hold on to things too hard, you can't pivot. You can't keep going. You can't be agile. Yeah. So I'm hearing a couple things. One, I'm hearing perseverance. Mm -hmm. I'm hearing some some opportunistic. Right. You want you seize the moment when you saw it. Right. Totally. In these no businesses question. over over time, mm -hmm. you also push through some really tough challenges. Mm -hmm. Right. It wasn't easy, mm -mm. right? You've made some really tough calls with your family and your business with financing decisions, the mortgage, the home, all that kind of stuff, yeah. right? Yeah. Right? Totally. So why in the world would we want to be in business? <laughs> exactly. Right? Why do What's we want to do that? Um, I think it comes to a point where, like I was saying earlier, when your flame is, is flickering and dying, something will happen where somebody else will believe in you, like mm -hmm. where then they'll catch it. Or I've had these t team members or this person pick me up um, when I'm done. Mm. Um, and without those people, and they, they usually own other businesses too, or they've caught your fire mm. or your passion, um, and they come in and, and carry you or join it and just throw fuel on the fire. Um, I've had that happen with, with all the businesses actually, mm. where it's like, man, I, I can't do this anymore. And then I look and it's like, there's four, five, six people here who are driving it now. Mm. Like I'm the captain of the ship, but man, the everybody on board, um, the crew is who keeps the ship going. That's right. Yeah. And, and how, how many people is in your in your organization now? Um, in Helm? Yep. Uh, we've got probably a dozen, a few managers in the office, four or five, six managers, but then our factories that, that we contract with, that's one of them has 80 people, one of them has multiple hundred people. So just in-house though and with our store, I'd say 15. 15, mm -hmm. right, okay, so you're able to have a retail footprint and distribution with a relatively small team. Oh, definitely, and we, we shrink it when we have to, 
and we've that's probably max. But yeah, we um, we run a tight ship. That's great. Yeah. So for those folks who are, um, you know, trying to, uh, as we wrap up sort of in this last question, mm -hmm. what I'm really wondering is, for those folks that are interested in starting a business with a brick and mortar presence or a distribution presence mm -hmm. with some sort of a footprint, mm -hmm. right? It's a, it's an actual location, and their product maybe is going out to other locations. Um, what's the the advice you would give them uh, as they're making sense of mm -hmm. that idea, mm -hmm. and um, something that would help them see that they can do it? Mm -hmm but that it takes something. What's the something that it takes to do it? I mean, the first thing would be, I would say, would be courage. Right. Um, but in, in terms of the fiscal or the physical, it's um, finding someone to believe in you and, and that you proving that authenticity or showing that authenticity and passion enough for someone to believe in you to, to open a line of credit mm -hmm. or to um, uh, want to be part of your team, even if it's not... I've had people step down from really high six-figure salaries to, to work for us than a lot less than that. But they have I'm like, what are you doing here? Why did yeah. you leave this big shoe company to come work for Helm? They're like, there's something here. I want to be part of it. It's growing. I see where it's going to go. And I mean, it'll bring somebody like me to tears because yeah. it's like, you do? Like, I started this alone. You know, like what? So I think, I think that would be the thing. Like you were saying, perseverance is going to be huge but but courage in the beginning to just get started is you can't do it without it yeah so yeah. i've got one last question then. if it takes courage and belief how do you get people to believe in you so that you can do it i feel like i've had people ask me that before especially in terms of of raising money um part of me wants to say that it, it it's it's natural hmm. not like somebody will be like leadership is natural there's the natural aspect of whatever it is that you're doing, if you believe in it, or you're passionate enough about it, because I've lost mm. belief in things I'm doing before, sure. but I'll still come in, even if I've lost my game face, people will be like, why is he still coming in? Mm. He, we, we are late on payroll, or he put, staff will know I put payroll on a credit card. Like these have happened, well, or, or Joshua took himself off mm. being paid, or took his kids out of private school, or whatever it is, that, sacrifice proves something hmm. um, and it's never been intentional for me it's like yo this is what we got to do if we're going to do it they see that yeah and they're like well we're sacrificing too yeah. or we're in, we're in for the long haul yeah and I, I think the takeaway there is is we've got joshua here saying that he's made some really tough decisions decisions that a lot of people might walk away from yeah. right yeah. and um and to make those decisions repeatedly shows consistency and you know, what your character is right and so right. people get to see that and say you know what I can make this sacrifice because you're making that sacrifice, yeah, yeah, right? Totally. Yeah. Well, this has been great. Can you tell cool. people where Thank they you. can find out more about you and yeah. maybe find you online? Yeah, for sure. Helm, H E L M, boots, B O O T S dot com. Helmboots.com. Perfect. Yeah. So I'm Justin McCullough. This is Small Business Festival. Thank you, Joshua. Thank you, Justin.